Welcome to the Love Fly podcast. It's called Hazard Fear of Flying Coach. And today's guest is Kelly Kiewick, who is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stuff this up, Kelly, but she's a, a lifestyle, what is it? Welcome, a Kelly. Holistic. Holistic, <laughs> holistic lifestyle, lifestyle coach. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me along. It's great to be here. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So, so the reason I asked Kelly to come on is that for a while I've been looking for somebody who could talk about nutrition and the impact it might have upon your health, but also you know in terms of anxiety as well. And I saw Kelly, you've got loads of qualifications to that, but rather than me just sort of like make it up, just give us a little bit of a kind of a background so people listening will kind of know where you're coming from. Yeah, so I um, flew for over 30 years. And um, while I was flying, I got into the health side of things. So I wanted to train. First of all, I trained um, in as a, a gym instructor. And then I went on to be a personal trainer. And what I found is most people wanted to know about nutrition and about mm. diet, what they should and shouldn't be eating. So then I sort of went um, went sideways and specialised in things like any type, any types of diet, weight loss, training. So people that are training for fitness as well. Uh, yeah, and it just became an obsession, really. So I'm obsessed with anything to do with the health and the human body everything yeah oh brilliant and this is quite common so a lot of people who work as crew in the same you know crew on pilots often have like a second stream of things so, you know because the job itself can be enjoyable or not depending on what you know you want from a job but the reality is you have a lot of brain capacity and it means you know to keep yourself sort of going you You'll, I've noticed a lot of people like crew and pilots have like a second thing, you know, so it doesn't surprise me that you've got so deep into this and that's actually ended up as your job now. But So if we just sort of rewind a bit, tell us a bit about the, well, you can tell us what you want, but I'm really interested in the nutrition side, particularly could it impact people who ha have anxiety, for example? Yes, absolutely. So everyone experiences anxiety at some times in their life. But obviously, when we fly, our minds sometimes go into overdrive, don't they? And they, the brain and the nervous system, they struggle to cope with that. So basically, if the body has the correct chemical balance of nutrients and mm. vitamins and minerals, then we're able to cope with that stress and the anxiety of of flying much better mm. Mm. this is this is interesting because this is an area i know nothing about so i'm learning as you speak as and hopefully there will be people listening later will think oh, i didn't know that so you said there's about there's a right balance what well, tell us a bit more about that yeah well obviously um anxiety is worry and nervousness isn't it and and sometimes the causes of well basically the the brain things like stress and anxiety cause it to go into overdrive but we've got things like certain nutrients and vitamins and minerals that help the brain and your cognitive keep you keep your brain healthy and that so yeah there's a huge a huge yeah, if you're not getting those nutrients from your food mm. uh, that you eat, then obviously it's going to have an effect on the the whole of your brain and your nervous system and everything. Yeah, and it's going to filter down. Yeah. So yeah, well, I guess it makes really sense, it. doesn't it? Because it's it's your fuel, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Everything you eat, or you are what you eat. It it's energy and fuel for your cells. Yeah, it gets converted to energy. So yeah. what do you think people should be thinking, paying attention to in terms of do more of this, have less of that? Is there any sort of general guidelines? To do with flying or just health in general? Well, health, health and, you know, I suppose if you're healthy, you're in the best position you can be when you then do something which is stressful for everybody, which is 
going on an aircraft. You know, it's stressful. It's not something we do it while well, you you did, but not everyone does it all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. So things that can affect what, um, what we call the gut brain connection. Uh-huh. So they've they've discovered now that the gut is your second brain. So there's lots of neurotransmitters, I think they call them, in in the gut that signal to the brain. So if you're lacking those certain nutrients, then the brain doesn't work correctly. So just by eating the wrong type of diet, things, when when I say the wrong type of diet, diet like highly processed foods, like sugars, flours, what we call refined carbohydrates. So things that are very, very highly processed and full of chemicals and additives, preservatives, those types of Mm. things. And going a bit deeper, things like GMOs, artificial artificial fertilizers you know and then then you've got the soil as well that's been depleted of all the nutrients and it's been sprayed like I don't know if you've heard of something called glyphosate which which can damage the the insides of the gut they've done studies and they've yeah it can damage the gut so therefore you've not got that that gut brain connection so looking Mm. at what you're eating has, has a huge huge benefit yeah uh, I don't know if many everybody else has experienced this, but I'm suddenly the, I'm going through my menu for the last seven days now, going, oh crap, uh, yeah. So uh, so so if we move, so that's the sort of like to avoid those things, which is great, and I love that gut brain connection thing. I've yes, heard it, about it, that, but huge. no one's explained it as well as you've just done. That was made it real. That was nice and simple. Stress it it activates the nervous system and and affects the organs. You you know the adrenal glands mm. they start working overtime when when we go into a stress state, and we produce something. Um, what the adrenals produce something called cortisol to help uh, get rid of that that stress mm. in the body. And um, sometimes if you've got too much too much cortisol sort of going around the body, then it it can cause anxiety yeah so cortisol enhances adrenaline what you might have heard of the fight or flight yeah response and basically if you've got too much um, adrenaline going around your body and it's not getting rid of it it can cause problems in your body like health it have a detrimental effect on your health so in in the old days when we used to get st- stressed like from if a tiger was chasing you or something you would either fight that tiger or you'd burn it burn it off that that extra those cortisol or adrenaline in your body but nowadays it, it just builds up and so this ends up causing lots of different symptoms in the body and one of those is obviously anxiety and also inflammation which can then mm. have a knock on effect with all the different organs in the body and particularly your digestive system crikey that's really interesting. So moving towards the sort of the positive thing, maybe I'll come back to that at the end. No, let's do it. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah tell us, tell, so what, what sh- in terms of like giving us the best possible chance to deal with the extra anxiety, because, you know, anxiety is normal, isn't it? It's just, but it's the, the levels of it, which is different for yes. somebody who's scared. Of so to give us the best possible scenario for us to be, primed not like athletes but you know just in the best place we could be to to embrace flying if we don't like it what sort of stuff should we be eating more of yes I got there in the end with a question I didn't know where I was going sorry yeah so (laughs) yeah looking at what we what we should be eating in, in regards to nutrition to help the brain so so foods that are real fresh the fresher the better non-gmos for instance things things i call live not not dead food so don't mean eat a live cow or a live chicken or something but eat uh, foods that have not been hanging around for a long time so not highly processed so mm. basically if you eat a potato for instance that's basically in its whole form form whereas if you eat something like crisps they're a lot more highly processed. Yes. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So, so we we need to look at things like 
fresh, whole, organic, if if possible, GMO as well. Uh, sorry, GMO free, I should say. Rainbow coloured fruit and vegetables that are obviously very high quality foods um, because they're, they're really good to help battle any, any health issues, but anxiety as well, because you're getting all those, the optimum nutrition for, uh, of vitamins, minerals, all the things that we we all the things that we need our bodies our cells need to convert en- to energy so plenty of hydration as well that's another thing make sure you're drinking lots of water so that you can eliminate that flush out those toxins in the body so type of things that we're looking for are healthy fats as well like avocados really really good salmon olive oil eggs tuna coconut oil those types of things and things there's there's I just want to tell you about some research there that's shown a link between vitamin d deficiency and anxiety also there was um, some research on vitamin b1 and b12 so if you've got a deficiency in those that can increase anxiety as well how would you ever know though I mean that's really interesting yeah well most people in the UK are probably deficient in in vitamin d because we don't get a lot of sun <laughs> so no, well today's so, not yeah. the, that's not the case kelly but, but yes, not you're the right. case this week definitely no, not this that's week true. And, yes this is um, the place to come on holiday this week only though. yeah this week i, I hear it's going to get up to 40 degrees tomorrow so <laughs> yeah. i don't know what that looks like yeah. i just can't so, imagine <laughs> no so we need we need it we need a little bit of vitamin d from the sun but yeah we can get vitamin d from other other sources as well so from our diet it's most important to get it from the, the foods that we re, we, re, we are eating yeah well, so what about the other like, ones vitamin b1 and what the other one we said i can't remember what you said um uh, yeah b1 and b12 so the b b vitamins b12 is you get from things like um liver dairy products like cheese and milk yogurt eggs also, with vegans, because B12 it, it comes from animal products, they might need to take a supplement. But just, I just want to say, always consult a doctor or a healthcare professional if you are going to take any supplements, obviously, because they can interfere with things like medic- medication and that. So it's always better to make sure that you speak to a healthcare professional before you start supplementing and, you know, to test as well, because like you say, you might not need mm. that particular vitamin, vitamin D, we probably all, all need, but it's much better to get it from natural sources than to actually take it from, uh, in, in a supplement form. Yeah. yeah. So how do you, how do we test? Well, there are, there are you can go to the doctors and the doctor will do tests but there are also private people that can actually do tests as well and so there's a number of different things that yeah you you, you can find um, a, a holistic healthcare pr- practitioner that will actually do the tests for you yeah if you you know if you're concerned about if you're lacking in certain vitamins but obviously if you go down that route you have to pay and you might find if you go to the doctors it's on the national health so it might be better to first of all go to the doctors and and see if he'll do tests for or he or she do tests for you yeah so those in the uk national health Woo! Uh, so (laughs) that's interesting so for me when i sort of play that through what a nervous flyer might be thinking and thinking well what why should you know why should i do i'm just i'm just anxious and i think there's some the, the the thing that I often come back to is the fact that flying can be quite stressful anyway. You know, I have to get everything ready. You've got to think about all the planning. You've got to make sure everything's sort of closed off what, from what you're leaving, if it's a holiday. And so there's a normal amount of stress that goes with that. So if you're already operating sort of eight out of 10 in your stress levels, you're, you're, already, you're not in the best place to then go and do it. So then... That's why I think things like think about nutrition. And I'm going to ask you about some of your other areas in sex. I think that'd be interesting too. But the nutrition is like, how can I prepare myself the best case? So if you, there's, there's no athlete in the world that wouldn't take care of their nutrition because they're going to do something which they know is going to be physically and mentally demanding. And so 
you know, flying, you know, sitting on an aircraft for 10 hours, for example, is exhausting. You know, it doesn't fit, you think you're just sitting there, but it's exhausting, isn't it? So people need it to, is. yeah, so I think it's it's useful. So you mentioned earlier on, I'm going to get this right now, so the holistic lifestyle coach. So what sort of, I mean, what sort of stuff would you do with someone? So someone comes and sees you, and are you open to bookings, by the way, because some people, you might get some contacts from this. So you might yes, have to put your details yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. yes. So if someone comes and sees you and says whatever they would say, how, sort of talk us through how that might work and what sort of stuff you might look at. Yes, first of all, questionnaires. Questionnaires are huge. So where's, where is somebody at at the moment? Because you need to find what, what's going on, what's going on with them. So I do have a lot of questionnaires that are quite, in depth because with holistic we we don't want to know about what your symptoms are we want to know right the way back you know even might even go right the way back to childhood something that happened in your childhood a trauma for instance can have an effect on the brain now and it can still be stress and you can still feel that or even though you don't even think about it it's there in in your system somewhere Mm. so yeah so going right the way back looking at what what you know type of diet you're having now what 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 you're eating what you're not eating what's you might have symptoms as well that there's different health problems and that so yeah so we'll have a look at all that and and then give you a number in each each different section and then when you come when you come to have a review maybe in 12 weeks time where are you at so we want to see that those numbers mm. are going down yeah um, because certain different areas have different different numbers and then we can address that what what you need to you know what you need to do to make that better and it it might not be necessary just about diet it might be about fitness you know just getting out and walking getting out in the fresh Mm. air it might be about so it's not just all exercise or nutrition or, or it might be about detoxification it might be about stress levels it might be about your structure, like the bones and your muscles, how they're functioning and even breathing and how you can relax and, mm. you know, doing a bit of meditation or, you know, getting out in nature, those, those type of things. So it, holistic means whole lifestyle. It's not just one sort of area that that I would look at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good. To know. So is it based upon some sort of, I don't know, research base or some sort of framework? Because you you rattled off quite a few separate areas there. And I had in my mind, well, it sounds like there must be like 10 or 12 things that you must be looking at, but there's probably more. But because, you know, it's like the questionnaire will give you a bunch of stuff. But I'm, as the sort of devil's advocate going, who decided what went on the questionnaire? You know, so that's, that's the question that's in my mind. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, I I qualified in something called Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, FDM. Just pause on that. Sounds posh. That sounds like something, you know, we should just just pause and reflect on the the poshness of that title. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, Yeah, carry on. (laughs) And we, we use something called Dress for Health, it's called. And it basically looks at a number of different different systems in the body. And they came up with the questionnaires. So I actually use, use oh, right, that. Okay. Um, Very good. Yeah. Yeah. And they've used them on thousands and thousands mm. of different people. There's a, quite a lot of practitioners all over the world, an American uh, qualification that I did. And yeah, so it looks at ba- basically detoxification systems, make sure that you're detoxing properly because not only do we take foods in, into our body and We need to make sure that when they get inside our body, that they're being utilized so the cells can take them up and they're also being eliminated from the body as well. So we're looking at digestion, we're looking at absorption, we're looking at simulation in the body and elimination. So we take those all into account. Mm. It's really interesting. So it literally is like whole life stuff, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not, you know, it's not about symptoms. It's about making you feel, making you, making you feel better, improvement of, of the whole general health. It's not labeling it as, mm. oh, you've got that symptom. So you've got that. So it's just, look, no, we want the whole body 
we want to look at the whole body, the health of the whole body. Mm. Yeah. Interesting, Kelly Kiri. So what's the best bit about your work? Definitely helping people. It's, it's so nice when you you can give some some people just some mm. tools that they can then go off and use to better their better their life, you know, because if we're not feeling good, we're not feeling healthy in our minds, you know, everything becomes so much harder, doesn't it? Um, mm. The way that even, you know, the way we move, we, if we are not moving properly and healthy, then everything becomes so much harder in life. No, I like that. So any sort of stories that you could share with, obviously out naming people, but things where you think this person came in a really bad way and then as a result of it, they, you know, I'm, and I'm putting you on the spot here. I didn't sort of pre-warn you, but I didn't know I was going to yeah. ask it. So there you go. It's a surprise yeah. to me as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, one lady that I can think of in particular that I trained, she had polio as a child and mm. she was basically in a wheelchair and she, so I don't think a lot of people realize that gut brain connection. And so it it was it it was everything that she changed you know she obviously she couldn't walk at first but she did in the end and that was the that was the most fantastic no thing way. that actually got her in the water because i'm trained in aqua aerobics so got her into the water obviously looked at her what she was eating everything really to do with her lifestyle and she came in one day and she said look i'm walking no stick and that was that was fantastic. That was like, yeah, the fact that she Amazing. didn't have a stick anymore was, yeah, just fantastic. Yeah. So it, it can. And, and I think the mind is very powerful as well. It's if you want to do something, you will. So, yeah, mind over matter really, really is huge. Because if you believe something, you will make that happen. And if you think, well, that will never happen, then it won't. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. Yes, that, I, that is a good story. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it made me feel so good. Yeah. And she was so obviously so excited yeah. about it. And I mean, so excited proper life changing stuff, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So I can see why you're addicted to doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely when you can when you can help mm. people like that. Yeah. So mm. if somebody was going to come to you, and to get some help, I mean, I know it's how long is a piece of string, but so they do a bunch of questionnaires. And what's a typical sort of number of sessions that or times they'd need to come and see you to, to get some results? Yeah, obviously, it depends where they're at at the moment. So normally, every every couple of weeks have a session to check in over over a three months period. Obviously, then if they feel that they're not where they want to be or they want to go further then you know up even uh, 12 weeks is good but it depends what they're having and what their problem problem is yeah. and uh, you know if they they want to continue you know even up to a year yeah um i i did find i was working with some people so i can't remember i think it was three months and at the end of it i was working with groups at that time and at the end of it, they they felt they wanted it, needed to carry mm. on. And um, so they kind of set up a group session between themselves, which was really nice. So there's always that where you can, you know, meet meet people if you're in a group and then you can carry it on because it's very motivating when people mm. are together and they've got the same goals, if you like. That's that's something. And, and now, obviously, we've got the we've got Facebook, haven't we? So people can join private groups on facebook yeah. and discuss their their things as well yeah mm. exactly yeah. so if somebody wants to come and get some help from you can they do it virtually or do they have to come and physically see you how, how does that side work yeah virtually yeah it's a uh, nowadays we've zoom and teams and all the other different things you know even even by phone you know it's like mm. yes and it, it's the, the world's opened up so you can you know have clients all over the world they don't have to be just just in on your doorstep yeah so so if yes. you could just say in the podcast I mean, i'll put your details in the thing afterwards but if you could say the the easiest way 
for people to contact you yeah if someone's inspired to do so what would that be yep so i'm on social media i'm on facebook and instagram under kelly k's coaching that's um ks coaching kelly k's coaching i'm also on linkedin um under my name kelly kiwick and i have a website which is kellykayscoaching.com and can even contact me on email which is kellycasecoaching at gmail.com mm. okay so i'll put all of these details into the podcast stream as well and i'll put because i'll put it up when i do an announcement on facebook and instagram and everything we'll put all of that in there as well so so if anybody wants to contact kelly and you didn't have a chance because a lot of people when they listen to the podcast are either ironing or driving so which is the kind of normal some people play it when they go to sleep because yeah. They, yeah i don't know how They're to great. take that it's great yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it helps me go to sleep, listen to your voice. Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah. So the so last thing then, if you had to say someone's nervous flyer or or even whether they are, they are, they're just, but they, something about them has tri- been triggered by what you've said. If you had to give some advice in terms of what what they could do, what they should do maybe in terms of helping themselves, what would yeah. your advice be? So first of all foods to avoid things that that obviously increase anxiety you're not going to like this one but alcohol caffeine well that's half of my diet gone (laughs) what's left (laughs) yes sugars like um, especially refined grains as well artificial sweeteners processed meats trans fats refined oils and anything with artificial colors and flavorings but the best foods to eat, so things like oily fish that are full of omega-3s, which are lots of research shown really, really good for the brain. Wild salmon, sardines, mackerel, those type of things. Dark leafy green vegetables. The other thing that's quite good as well is, is mushrooms because they've, they've got prebiotics in them and prebiotics obviously good for the gut and then the gut brain connection there's some hope there's some hope there so i've got to give up coffee and all the way but i can eat mushrooms i like mushrooms but you know it's not much of a substitute but i'll take it yeah well coffee in small amounts is is fine and when you have it as well because if it if it's too late in the day it's going to affect your your Mm. sleep but a small amount of coffee has been shown to increase um, stamina and you know people that have, have been in, in the olympics have had uh, coffee but it's finding the right amount that's the thing with that <laughs> yeah so tw- would you say 12 is too many in a day then yeah 12 is too many oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah. all right i'll make a note yeah yeah probably three yeah somewhere around three. there that's like yeah. that's a slow morning yeah know. so other things that are really good as well is berries walnuts Turkey and chicken, uh, the white meat is better than the brown meat. It's been found to have something in it that really helps anxiety as well. Okay. Yogurt, fermented foods such as kefir, sauerkraut, and something called kombucha. Uh, It's really good for balancing mood and avocados. And then things like seeds such as chia, flaxseed, pumpkin, and eggs and dairy so there's some great great mm. foods in there you know mm. if, you, if you think about it and full of really high in nutrition vitamins and minerals yeah, yeah. and if you get a good balanced balanced diet then you know that's going to really help with anxiety nervousness and uh, nervousness of flying as well and of course plenty of good quality water mm. yeah that's good. That's really helpful. That, and that's perhaps given some people something to think about. They may not have thought about that. I have noticed over the years that people that that tend to change their practice in terms of looking after themselves tend to fare better when they're facing something like fear of flying, which is an enormous thing. And so th- th- this is it. That's, this is really good advice in line with that. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, mm. that you found that. So that's that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anybody wants any help, you can contact Kelly. We'll put uh, the details already mentioned in the podcast, but I'll also put them in the various streams where we'll pop this. And maybe that if you're busy, 
is there a network of holistic lifestyle coaches or is it just is it just you and that's it it Oh no! Yeah, there's 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 a lot of them. Yes. No, we're yeah. sending them all away. Over we the world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's 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 thousands of functional diagnostic nutrition people trained over the world, all over the world. So yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. If, if people if people are like you know perhaps in a completely different time zone, if we have some people listen to this who are in LA or or some you know which is obviously eight hours behind as you know, we've got people that in dubai and places like that so we've got different time zones going on they could search that term and find somebody perhaps near to them absolutely yes function was it called functional diagnostic functional diagnostic nutrition yeah brilliant okay yeah. lovely kelly kiewit brilliant thank you very much so grateful thank you very much for having me on today thank you